When you work with web services, the data typically comes back to you in either XML or JSON format. Either way, as an Android developer, you'll want to model the data using plain old Java objects, Java classes, where each instance of the class is designed to contain one instance of the data. Let's take a look at one of the feeds that I'll be working with. There are two feeds available, one in JSON format and one in XML. I'll look at the XML version because it's a little bit easier to read. In the XML feed, there's a root element named products, and then multiple elements named product. Each product represents a flower for this particular product set. Within each product, there are multiple data elements, including product ID, category, name, and so on. Most of these elements represent text values, but a couple of them are intended to be numeric. The product ID is intended to be an integer, and the price a double or float. To model this data in an Android app, you'll create a Java class. So I'll go to my project, Model Data, and I'll create a new class. I'll right-click on the default package and go to the new Java class wizard. I'm going to add this class to a new package. I'll add .model at the end of the default package. And then, I'll give the class a name of flower. I won't be extending any classes or implementing any interfaces, so I'll click Finish to create the class. Next, I'll create one field for each data element within each product. I'll start with the product ID. I'll create these as private fields. So the first one will be private, and then the data type, which will be int for this field, and then the name of the field, which will be product ID. I'm going to exactly match the names of the data elements to the names of the fields. This is going to help us a lot later on when we use some of the more advanced ways of parsing content and turning it into Java-compatible code. Next, I'll create a string field, and this will represent the flower's name. And then I'm going to duplicate that line of code a number of times, and I'll create fields for all of the other elements. Category, Instructions, Price, and Photo. Now, again, most of these will be simple strings, but I'll set the data type of the price to double. Next, I'll generate setters and getters for all of these fields. I'll select them all, right-click, and choose Source, Generate Getters and Setters. I'll select all, and place the insertion point after Photo or after the last member. I'll click OK, and that generates all of the getters and setters I need to access and modify the data within this class. I'll add a little bit of white space to make this a little bit more readable, and then I'll save that change. Next, I'll go to the main activity class, and I'm going to create a field in the main activity to represent a list of all of the data objects that I'm going to be retrieving from the web service. I'll once again use the Java list interface for this, but the data type of the objects within this list will be flower. I'll type the beginning of the new class name, press control space, and then select it. Because it's in a different package than this class, I must have an import for it. And by selecting it from the list, I've added that import to the import list. I'll give this object a name of flower list, and that's all I need to do for now. The next step will be taking the data that I'm getting from the web service, whether it comes to me in JSON or XML, parsing it, and transforming it into this list of plain old Java objects.